Hello, I'm Baz. Uh, this is my um, Fat Boy Gasifier. It's an open source project. It's essentially a top lit updraft dual skin gasifier. It has um, a, a perlite insulation. The, the unit uses a primary chamber which is a upside down 100 kg gas bottle. Um, it uses a 8 mil thick um, um, condenser um, pipe. Um, it's got a stainless steel 1800 high um, flue. The flue also has a vortex slot cut into it to increase um, turbulence in the flue. This is the bottom of the primary chamber. It's a hinged um, section with a, uh, a quench indicator which is essentially a pin um, which is held in place with a flammable stick. Um, when the char, hot char gets down to the grate it burns the stick out, the pin will drop down indicating that the char is ready to be emptied. The unit is simply held in place with a pin which is knocked out with a hammer when it's ready to go. Now we'll fill the unit and light it up. This is a standard woody mulch which I get from the local council. It's clean, there's no contaminants and it's a reasonably uniform particle size. You can use a standardized moisture meter to get an idea of the, the moisture content that you're dealing with. Today we're also going to be um, pyrolyzing some dog bones. These will, these will carbonize down quite nicely. Um, these will be mixed uh, evenly through the woody mulch. Okay, now we fill. This unit can take up to 100 litres of woody biomass. This is all sun dried with 20% or less moisture content. You have to make sure that the mulch is evenly spread and there's no air gaps. I'll slowly add some beef bones and some rue tail, which is kind of left over by my pet dogs. Clear this area so this material doesn't catch fire because it does get quite warm up here. This is a, um, a little secret, a few macadamia nuts at the top. That's uh, rocket fuel to really get the temperature up. Uh, you don't need a lot um, but they do have a dramatic effect on the temperature ranges which a gasifier will run at. One of the, um, one of the things I've learned over the years is when using newspaper is to tear it into very fine strips when you're using newspaper for a gasifier. This allows the air to slowly or rapidly move through the, the gasifier and up. Uh, screwed up newspaper can often um, impede the airflow I found so this is by far the best way to, to use newspaper for a fire like this. One of the um, important things with uh, lighting of a, of a gasifier is using a good, fine, dry, kindling feedstock. The idea of this is it'll run really hot and you're not going to have smoke annoying your neighbours. This will light quickly and efficiently and the unit will not smoke for longer than 15 se seconds after lighting. Okay, now I'm just sliding some starter fuel in at the top. This is what I like. One of the next improvements which I intend to add is a door that I'll cut into the flue. Uh, this will allow me to remove the, the door, um, add lighter material which is essentially newspaper um, and then easily use a bendy lighter to, to light. It's a little bit awkward at the moment.
there we go that's a simple lighting that newspaper will light it will fall down into the primary chamber and ignite the starter fuel um, which is kindling just um, nice clean kindling and some newspaper you can also clearly see the drawer of the unit and um, you'll also have an audible roar as you see the top of the flue you'll have some newspaper ash come out of the top but essentially there's no smoke as you can see the, the flame has now come um, and it's burning the kindling in the top of the primary chamber you've got a good flame in the condenser um, this is essentially just starting the process uh, the gasification process hasn't actually begun as yet this is a quenching bath uh, the idea is for the char when the pin is pulled to, to, to basically drop straight into a cooling bath of, of water or, or nutrient rich water um, that puts the char out instantly it also increases the, 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 the water holding capacity of the of the char that you produce this is a good quality poultry compost I actually buy this commercially I'll add this into the quenching bath and I'll mix it up with water so we just throw the compost in simple as that and then we add the water I only use rainwater this is just a, a cheap bentonite just a, a powdered clay which I add into the quenching bath and then using my homemade scoop to give it a good wash around and mix up One of the issues that I currently have with this unit is I added a condenser pipe which is slightly too small. Um, if you listen, you should be able to hear a popping, or what I call popping or a micro ignition. The flame is, is, is flicking on and off um, in a very rapid um, way. Uh, this means that the, fl the flame can actually go out if you don't have a good consistent material. To modify this, I'll increase the diameter of, of this condenser pipe here by about another five centimeters, and that should take care of it. One of the other uses of a gasifier is cooking marshmallows quickly. The unit now has settled down uh, for gasification, um, some slight micro ignition. The, the condenser pipe, which takes the lion's share of the heat from the gasification process, is currently at 520 degrees Celsius. The unit itself takes most of the heat in the condenser which is a 8 mil thick pipe. This area here in the flue is incredibly hot but due to the insulation it's quite safe to touch here. The temperature of the outer skin of the drum is currently sitting at between 30 and 46 degrees base of the drum is 18 degrees. The perlite insulation works quite well as a cheap reflective insulation. Ceramic fibre could be used but will greatly increase the cost of the insulation in the unit. The biochar is put in an oxygenless environment as the char bank travels down through the biomass, the smoke rising puts the char 
the freshly charred material above into an oxygenless environment so the carbonisation process is stopped and you get a very very low ash content. As you can see here the unit itself is drawing in clean air to mix with the volatile smoke. The air creates a nice almost liquid looking flame. This is drawn up to burn up in the flue. The uh, quench indicator has just gone off. I can actually see a little bit of hot char dropping down into the quenching bath. Uh, I always use a good, good quality pair of welding gloves and some safety glasses because you do sometimes get some sparks flying around. The, uh, the sun's gone down here so um, we're going to have a nice bit of a show. So here we go. So rake all the char directly into the quenching bath, push it down, Got an extra bucket of water. Try and avoid the steam. There's some carbon monoxide in that. Looks like we've got a pretty good batch here. Scrape it out and into the quenching bar. The style of unit will always have some excess uncharred material. I don't worry about that because it all goes into my compost. Fully carbonised biomass, including the bone. There are some volatile smells to it, which is normal for a unit like this. That'll break down when I layer it through the compost.